Hi everyone, when we talk about transitions in CSS, we think of it as something that really doesn't have much of a JavaScript intersection to it. But as we saw with CSS animations, transitions also fire events. And in this video, we'll take a look at what these events are and how to take advantage of them in JavaScript. So, okay, I kind of lied. We don't have events for transitions. You have a single event. And that event is known as transition end. And as its name implies, this event is fired when a transition has just completed running. And that seems pretty simple. And let's go ahead and look at some code and put all that stuff into practice. So here I have a very simple example. I have a circle. It's a, I'm treating it as a button, essentially. And when I hover over it, a transition plays where it makes the circle grow in size and then go, grow back down in size when I hover outside of it. And the marker for it looks a little bit like this, you know, ignoring what the circle looks like and how it is defined. The key element is that I have an ID of blah, which is associated with an element in my markup, and then I have the transition declaration, which is listening for a transform property over a period of 0.2 seconds. It's a custom cubic Bezier easing function. And then on hover, I'm actually changing the size of the circle. It's a transform property that changes the scale in the x and y direction by about 20%. So that's what causes the circle to grow and then shrink. It's the hover pseudo selector on the element itself. Pretty cool. All right, so what we want to do now is actually have listen for a transition end event, and each time that event is overheard, update the number that is displayed inside there. And the markup is basically, this is the circle, the out outer div with the ID of blah, and inside I have a heading one tag with uh, ID of count that currently has a value of zero in it. So we're going to write some code that listens to a transition end event, and then updates the value each time that event is overheard. So pretty simple, right? So the first thing we're going to do, just like all events, this one is something you listen to on the element that's actually being affected, in which case our blah element. So let me type in my element equals document that query selector. And the div is of course, hashtag blah using the selector syntax. And now all we do is add the event listener, just like any event you would encounter in JavaScript. So my element dot add event listener, in this case, I'm typing in transition end. And let's call this one update number, update count, and don't care too much about the bubbling. All right, so I have my element, have the listener. All I need to do is eventually create the event handler that will get called when the transition end event is overheard. So I'll do that. Let's go function, update count, and let me get the bracket correctly. All right. So at this point, if I were to hover over this element, theoretically, the transition end event is overheard and update count is actually fired. But let's actually make it work so that you can actually see that happening. So to do that, I'm gonna first get a hook into the h1 element and using the similar document query selector syntax earlier. And the idea for heading element is count. Let's call this hashtag count. And let me create a, you know, a variable called count as well, just so that we can update it and display the value right here. All right, now let's go ahead and update the count. So I'm gonna first increment count by one, count plus plus, and then let's set the h1 element dot text content to the value of the count variable we just created. All right, so now I'm gonna hover over the square. Notice that the number went from zero to one. When I hover out of it, it goes to two. So clearly our example is working. And the thing to really pay attention to this is that notice that the transition plays twice. It plays once when I'm hovering over the element because the transform property changed to make the circle bigger. And now it's gonna play one more time when I hover out of it because the transform property is now getting the circle back to its earlier state. And that's one of those things that you often don't notice when you think about transition end event. You think of transition as a gesture that is fully run to completion, but behind the scenes, your gesture might involve both the hover which causes the transition, and a hover out, which causes the ending of the transition, but it's still the same thing. It's still two individual transitions because the property for transform, the value changed twice. So there you have it, a very quick overview of the JavaScript needed to make transitions work. And like I mentioned before with CSS animations, the events you have for transition are not comprehensive, but it is definitely pretty useful because with transitions, you don't have multiple keyframes, you just have a state that starts off, that you start off with, and a state that you end with. So the transition end event is more than adequate. Now, if 
someone from the JavaScript or the CSS world is listening and has the ability to change things, I'd say a transition start event. That would be really cool, being able to know when a transition is about to begin. That would be pretty much would solve all my eventing needs with CSS transitions. So with that, if you have any more questions, be free to post in the forums at forum.crib.com. And of course, crib.com is the website where I post a lot of content, a lot of content related to animations, to JavaScript, and a whole host of things that I find interesting and I hopefully, find, I hopefully think that you find interesting as well. You can find me everywhere on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search for Krupa. And of course, you know, transitions, events, all this stuff falls under animation. And I love animation so much that I wrote a 500 plus page book called Animation in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you can find it on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle edition. So definitely check it out if you found this stuff interesting. All right, guys, next time.